Welcome back to School of Calisthenics Saints with Tim and Jacko. Today for you, we have got a beginner's handstand follow along workout. And we're not gonna be using any equipment at all today, so you can do this one at home. So the exercises we're gonna cover, we've got to break into two sections, movement patterning and, mo and capacity strength. Our movement patterning exercises are gonna be a frog stand, a wall handstand practice with some balance, and also I put in some shrug and alignment work in there as well. And our capacity strength exercises are gonna be a walkout to get some more core strength and some pike push-ups. So to give you a heads up on how the video is gonna work, it's broken down into two parts. In this first part, we're gonna give you, go through all those exercises, give you the demonstrations and the key coaching points for those. And if you're comfortable with all those exercises already, you can jump ahead to part two, where we're gonna go through the actual workout together, get through some reps and sets and start to have some fun getting strong. So let's look at the frog stand, our first introduction to hand balancing and getting started, taking the feet off the floor and getting our hands, taking our body weight so we can start to progress into a handstand. It's a real simple movement with a key, few key coaching points. So Jack is going to go shoulder width apart with his hands. You can see here he's just going to keep the palm slightly off the floor so he can grip with his fingertips. This is a really important part of our hand balancing that we can use that grip and strength to control our body position. You're then going to bend his elbows and the knees are going to come up just above the elbow and they're going to sit just on the back of the triceps. He then starts to rotate forward, screwing the hands out to create some stability in his shoulders. And you can see he stacks his hips up on top of the shoulders. As he feels confident, he can then put one foot off the floor. He can then bring the second one to join him. And the job then is just to practice that balanced position. You're going to have to feel like you need to tip a little bit further forward than maybe what you want to. And that's just you're going to find that seesaw balance position. Otherwise, you're going to find you're constantly just falling backwards and your feet end up on the ground. So lift yourself up, play with it a little bit. This one takes a little bit of practice, but you'll build the confidence and before long, you're going to be holding it in such a great position exhibited by Dave. So the second movement patterning exercise we're going to look at is taking us from that low down position and get working all the way from the top, so into a full handstand, but we're going to be using the wall. So we're going to look at the kick up and then the alignment you've got to create whilst you're up there. So hands go on the floor, shoulder width apart, just like they were in the frog stand. All those things exactly the same. Fingers gripping the floor. The, Tim's then going to go into like a track start position where he's got his strong leg at the front and um, the other leg outstretched at the back. It's this front leg that he's going to drive with and the back leg acts like a pendulum because it's nice and long and straight until he finds the ball. You might want to be a little bit selective about which wall you use when you're at home that you're not going to go straight through it. Make sure it's a nice solid wall and one you don't mind having um, your feet on against. So then once he's in that position, what he's got to make sure is he creates this grud alignment. So he's got to push down into the floor to lift his feet up the whole time. So you see that movement there, the hips drive up, the feet drive up against the wall, and then he's got his tummy tight and his bum squeezed on nice and tight to make sure that this stays in a nice straight line all the way down from the hips to the shoulders, rather than if he goes into an arch position where he's looking forward and we see this shape in the back here, it can put a little bit of pressure on the lower spine, which we don't want. So we need that lift up, bum on, core on, pushing down to raise your feet as high as possible so you're feeling about making yourself long and strong. So now we're comfortable up against the wall and we can create a good alignment, we can actually start to practice this balance um, skill acquisition phase, which is going to help us to learn that freestanding handstand. So Jacko is going to go up into kick up just as we did before. The first thing he does in this position is creates nice, strong, stable shape like we talked about before, emphasizing that shrug, locking the midsection down. So now he's in a strong position, he's got to start to teach his brain how to balance on his hands. And you can see he brings the one foot off, leaving one on the wall, which is just shifting more weight over his base of support so he can start to practice what it's like with less um, support against the wall and relying less on the wall for balance. As he gets good at that, he gets his nice long straight line, quads working hard, he's created some good tension. Now the, back, the next job is to see, can you just bring this other leg slightly off the wall, still using the wall for some support, but just gently touching it for the correction when you need it. This is all about time and attention. There's no specific reps and sets, just some practice until you've got both feet off the wall. The second part of the workout focuses on the strength to be able to maintain this handstand. So those first exercises are about the patterning, the learning to balance on your hands, the skill required for that. Now we're going to look at getting strong. So we've got two uh, capacity strength exercises for that. The first one is the pike push-up, where Tim goes from his normal push-up position, and then what he's going to do is walk his feet forward and stick his bum nice and high up in the air. He's trying to get his hips as high as possible so they start to get 
more inverted compared to the, the shoulder. From that position, what he's going to do is going to screw the elbow so they point backwards, and then as he drives himself down, he's going to be taking his head forward rather than um, directly between his hands, so they make a triangle with the hands. So when they go out and his head goes forward, his elbows point back. If his head goes straight down, the elbows end up sticking out to the sides, put the shoulder in a bad position. It's really important. We see the movement forward and then drive back up to that same position because what sometimes happens is you go forward on the way down when you're not strong enough, the hips drop down, you turn it more into a push-up rather than a pike push-up. We're trying to get that vertical pushing that Tim's showing you beautifully there. The last exercise we're going to have a look at is the walkout. This is a great core exercise which is going to help us to transfer force through the chain in our handstand and create nice, strong, stable shapes. Super easy to start off with. Jacko is going to drop into his push-up position. This is just a real key point here is how we start to set, set this movement up. If we're in a bad shape in our push-up, we're going to transfer that when we move into the core, uh, into more difficult core positions. So we don't want to see this slumping. We want to see the rib cage locked down on top of the hips. Imagine you've got a bowl of water on each. You don't want to allow the water to spill by, by lifting the rib cage. Bums on, keeping this, this whole movement section super tight. Jack is just going to walk his hands out now and he goes as far as he feels comfortable. You'll get to a point where you feel like if you go any further, you're going to see that back arch and banana. Dave's pretty good at these, so he can actually go out into a real long shape. What we want you to do in this position is just hold out, hang out there for some time, and that's just going to help us really build that strength. Just show him a bad one, Jacko, with the... Uh, with the back arch. So when you get, take your hands out, you'll feel like you almost, your back just going to bend and your bum is going to stick up in the air. Don't train in this position because you're just reinforcing bad technique that isn't going to transfer into your handstands. So let's get into the workout now. Just so you know, it's going to be into two parts. We've got the movement patterning part, which we're going to do first, and then we're going to have the capacity strength part. We'll do the movement patterning part first because that's the bit where you're trying to balance. That's the bit that's a bit sort of um, cognitively demanding in terms of the brain having to think and having to work quite hard. So we want to do it when we're fresh. So we're starting first with the frog stand, and then we're going to go through each exercise in a little mini circuit together. So key thing on this frog stand, where Tim is going to try and hold it for 10 seconds, he's going to be pushing down hard into the floor the whole time. So 10, nine, eight, seven, he's not resting, six, five, he's pushing down hard, four, three, you can see him working, two, one. That's a great 10 second hold. So from there, we then go over to the wall and we're looking at this kick up and working our alignment. So into the kick up where we're gonna be pausing at the top, we're gonna to do a five second pause and we're gonna do them three times. So tummy tight, bum tight, reaching up, and so five, four, three, two, one, and then he's gonna come back down, we're gonna do that three times, we're gonna do three reps of those. So about time under tension there. Tummy tight, pull up, five, four, pushing feet high, three, two, one, good. That long and strong, last rep, kick to the wall. Feet as high, always pushing to the sky, four, three, two, one, down we come. Then the third exercise is then actually working on the balance. So you're going to take that nice alignment that you've created and we're going to take one leg off the wall and we're going to look to hold for maybe like five to 15 seconds of actual balance work. So he's got that one leg off, and he tries to just tap the other leg and then at some point he's going to find that balance point, hopefully, depending on how much experience we've got, we can hold for five, four, three, two, one. Beautiful, there we go. So that is one round of our movement patterning exercises, you're going to have 60 seconds rest now, or about a minute, um, and then it's going to be my turn. So 60 seconds rest in the bank, time to check out Jacko's technique and go through set number two. Frog stand please, Mr. Jackson. <laughs> so he sets himself up, hips nice and high, pushing down. Remember the key thing for this is trying to get yourself as high as possible. So I'm going to give him Did 10 seconds, to 10 yet? nine, <laughs> eight, seven, six, five, four, keep pushing Dave, three, two, <laughs> and one. Hey. Good, end of the frog stand. So the key point there is keep pushing down all the time, which you should really feel like you're trying to lift your hands, or you saw your knees off your elbows. Right, kick up with a shrug. So hands go on the floor, we're gonna drive that foot up into the wall, locks down that midsection, pushes himself up nice and tall. Five, four, three, two, one, and back down. Remember trying to get those feet as high up the wall, as strong and as long as you can make yourself. Pushing tall, five, four, three, two, one. Last rep, breathe in between. Try not to hold your breath on these either, but you keep breathing as you go through. Lock in midsection, nice and tall, five, four, breathe, three, two, one. 
So that's that nice long technique of alignment in the locker. It's working hard, eh? Workout. Got some capacity strength to come yet. Okay, the last bit of this movement pattern in circuit then is going to be the balance practice so you can kick yourself up. Just play around in this position, guys. Like Jacko and I can both pull our feet off the wall and balance, but if you're just starting out, it really doesn't matter. Just work at a point where you feel comfortable and you're giving yourself the opportunity to feel that stability, move to instability, and then you can correct it until you find that there's no shame in using that wall for support. Your brain needs the opportunity to practice and learn that position. Is that about 10 seconds, Dave? I don't know. <laughs> we'll give that one a rest. So there you go, that is set number two. We've got our capacity strength set to come. If you want to throw a little, little set of those exercises together, pause the video now, take yourself through one more set, and then join us for the capacity strength section right now. So remember, you should have had a minute's rest now, whether you've done your two sets or you did that extra one. And then now we're into the final part of the session, part two, where we're looking at the capacity strength. It's really important we spend some time getting strong for these handstands and not just get do all the, uh, the fancy stuff up against the ball, practicing that balance, because it is fun, but we need to get strong as well. So we're going pike push-ups is our first one. We're going to go for 10 reps. So Tim has walked his feet up. He's got the bum nice and high. Remember that head is making a triangle with the hands. So there's one, and as he drives, he drives the whole chain up two, control on the way down, up three, four, five, focusing on trying to make that push as vertical as possible. Eight, he's off, right off on his tiptoes, nine and 10. Lovely. So always making sure we have the control. Then we're straight into that walkout and we're gonna try and hold as far out as you can for 10 seconds. So core's tight, bum tight, eight, seven, six, five, four, look at that shape, three, two, one, and rest. <laughs> Coming down to the floor, so you can see how as when we start to be strong enough to get really nice and long, it's exactly the same overhead position as in your handstand, but you're using that core to really link those upper and lower extremities together. So a minute's rest, then it's my goal. So it's time for Jacko, time to go. Set number two, pipe push-ups. On these ones, guys, if you feel like the 10's too many for you to do, there's no problem about dropping those numbers down. You can go through whatever you can feel is achievable. As you start to get more confident with these, you build those numbers up. And also you can work through a shorter range of movement if you need to. So Jacko's going full range head to the floor. If you go down and find you can only go halfway, that's fine. Just work through the range of movement that you've got and you're still going to find that you really start to build some strength in this position. Is that about three, Jacko? Eight. All right, sorry. <laughs> I was talking. Okay, so keeping the bum nice and high, great technique, keeping the elbows in nice and tight to the body. Oh. Reps out the 10. Now for the walkouts. So again, you don't have to go all the way out. We, we kind of wanted to show you, to, we, we kind of pushing ourselves as well through the workout. So we've gone full range, but it might be that you literally move your hands three or four centimeters or four, five or six inches forwards, just to get enough strain on that position where it feels like your back's gonna bend, but you lock it in super tight, front and back, to hold for as long as you can. Aim for, aim for something you can do for 10 seconds. It's a meaningful amount of time, which is gonna to help to build up some strength. Once again, you can pause now, hit another set if you want to. Or if you don't, if you've done enough and you feel like you've put some work in the tank, well, you can have a rest and a, and a sit down. So that's the end of the workout, guys. You've got some skill-based work in the movement pattern. You've done some work to get strong. Hopefully, you probably find that your heart's up a little bit and you feel like you've done a decent amount of work. And all of that is going to build towards your handstand perfection. So you might have followed along just those two sets if you're just starting out or maybe you've done that extra third or even possibly a fourth, but that's probably about where we want to sit. Two to four sets of those looking to get some of the reps around eight to 10 to 12 reps when the, in the strength section. And then just making sure that in the patterning stuff, when you're working on the skill, you're taking your time to make sure there's real quality in the movement in terms of your alignment and the chance to give your brain the, the, the opportunity to learn how to balance on those hands rather than on your feet. Calisthenics means beauty and strength. We want to move with control and elegance. So make sure when you're doing this, you're always training with good technique. It's not about boshing out the reps in the shortest amount of time. Just take your time, move with grace, beauty, get strong. What else do you need? Well, at least we try. We, we, <laughs> yeah, we do our best. So until next time, class dismissed.